Hello and welcome to the very first Connextra's Sights and Sounds. Today we are going to be looking at Laserdisc players and their operation. Now we're going to be looking at three different players with a bonus fourth player. And we're going to be starting with a bit of an odd duck. This is the CLD M301. It's the Laserdisc player that has a built-in five disc CD changer. Now I'm going to do a separate Sights and Sounds video on this player because I took a lot of footage of the mechanism, but I'm starting with it here because it represents a bare bones laser disc player from the early 90s pretty well. It makes a few extra noises because of that CD changer mechanism, but for the most part, tons of laser disc players are going to sound exactly like this. Tons of single sided laser disc players, that is. Now, a quick programming note before we start I recorded most of this in mono. There's a stereo experiment later on that I'll talk about when we get there. And all of the recordings were made with the machines intact and their covers on. Because I want this to be representative of what the machine was actually like in overall use. So, let's get started. So, I'll begin by turning on the television. And then we will turn on the machine itself. going to open the tray. And now I'm going to place a laser disc on the tray and press play. We now have a picture. What I'm going to do now is press stop. And now I'll be pressing play with the disc already in the machine. Okay, so the disc that's playing now is a CLV disc. That's the long playing disc. And now I'll skip forward some chapters so you can hear the disc slowing down. It has captured the attention of the entire of course, you also heard the seeking noises of the laser as well. A lifetime supply of chocolate. And as if this were not enough. At this point, we are 16 minutes into the disc, so about a little more than a quarter of its runtime. Now I'm actually skipping backwards. And now we're going to hit eject. All right, and now I'm putting in a CAV disc.
we have a picture. Now, for those that don't recall, CAV disks maintain the same rotational speed. So when we skip ahead to different chapters, the disk did not slow down, and so chapter search was very fast. Another thing to note is that the Laserdisc display is showing the frame numbers. We're currently on frame 29,000 and something instead of runtime. We just went back to chapter 4. That's how long it takes. And we're now in frame 10,000, almost 11,000. Now we're back to the beginning. Chapter search is very, very fast with CAV. Okay, so obviously we removed it, and <clears throat> now we've moved on to the CLD D502. Now, this machine has a bit of an issue when it powers up after I haven't used it in a while. It has a belt that slips. So when you try to hit open, That's all that happens. Now this machine is a both side play model. It will play both sides of the disc. That's what's special about it. And we'll be looking at that process shortly. But while it's still stuck here, um, turns out there's a pretty easy fix. Just give it a good whack. That's all you need. Right now I'm just exercising the disc tray to hopefully keep it from getting stuck again. So I'm going to start this machine actually playing a CD. Now I'm going to repeat this, but I want you to listen for what it's doing, because if you pay close attention, you'll notice that it searches for something before it actually begins playing the CD. That's because internally what it's doing is it's checking to see if it has a laser disc, which is a larger diameter, then it moves to the CD. Hopefully you heard that first little check there. It's pretty subtle, but there's a slight delay when playing a CD for that reason. Okay, so now I'm putting a laser disc in the tray. We'll hit play. We have a picture. And now I'll be doing the same skipping around as I was before, but this time I'm going to skip to the very end of the disc, to the second to last chapter, I believe, so you'll see how long it takes to seek that far forward. Okay, and now I'm using picture search. Because this is a more basic player and it's CLV disc, the screen is very glitchy as I'm moving forward. Everything is um, broken up top to bottom.
And now the machine is going to switch sides automatically. And we have a picture. Now I'm going to do picture search near the beginning of the disc. You'll notice it sounds a, li a little bit different. It's moving much faster. I'm going to skip ahead some chapters. Whipped cream. And now you can hear the chapter search is slowing down, or the picture search is slowing down a bit. Okay, and we just opened and just heard it eject. Uh, now we're going to look at a clip of this machine misbehaving back when I was originally recording the footage for this video. The original video was featured in. This has had some sort of logic issue, and uh, it comes and goes. I don't know what causes it, but when you switch to the second side... It should not be doing that. What it's doing, the laser successfully moved to the top side, but it's continually ramming itself into the end of its track and it doesn't start spinning the disc. Now, this machine hasn't done it in a while. I assume maybe it has a bad capacitor. There's a giant one farad capacitor on the board that you can actually see in this shot. Uh, and again, I don't know why it does this, but this is a new shot because I restarted hoping to make it not do this and it does the same exact thing again. It's literally hitting the end stop on its travel like banging its head against the wall. So I'm going to try again, try to get it to play side two. And same deal. Now, in my desperation, I just started fiddling with the thing while it was... Um, moving around i'm pushing on the actual laser carriage right now and i don't know if this actually fixed it but um kind of seems like it did because at some point you hear it snap a couple of times like that and now the disc is actually spinning up So I don't know if that fixed it, but um, suddenly it's behaving correctly. And uh, I will switch it now to side B, and it works as it should. This is just a different angle. And that time it switched sides successfully.
All right, and this, there's no audio accompanying it because it is a slow motion shot of the laser carriage flipping from side A to B. Uh, in the original video, I commented on how clever it is that the same motor that moves it back and forth is responsible for flipping it over. It just has some clever gearing that it can switch to the other side. You can see that uh, toothed gear closest to the bottom of the screen. That moves at the same time as um, the little worm gear at the back that you can see. So it actually scoots itself around the carousel. It's pretty, pretty ingenious. This is a different shot and I'm showing going from B to A and you can see the laser actually scoot underneath once, once it flips to side A. Okay, you see the laser just there and now when it moves, just see it right there, taking a little peek. And then this is the same exact thing, just shown from the back to give a bit more of an overview of what's happening, but again, in slow motion. Okay, and now we are back to the new recording and we're gonna go through a CAV Laserdisc on this machine. Once I find it. Um, hello, me. We're different, everybody. We're here, okay. See, AV discs are particularly hard with auto reverse because the disc is spinning at full speed when it goes to reverse. So that's why I wanted to show this recording here as well. But we have the same thing. Chapter search is very, very fast. And picture search is completely silent. It's an interesting thing about CAV. You don't hear any noise from the transport. The picture is just perfectly fluid as you're going forward and backward. And now we will switch to side B with the machine spinning at full speed. And we have a picture. So obviously it takes a lot longer for it to switch on a CAV disc just because the disc is spinning at the full 1800 RPM when it goes to switch sides. It only adds a few seconds, but it's significant. Just doing some more picture search here. Hit my head harder than I thought. Do you smoke? Mind if I do? <laughs> oh, sorry, Chita. Interesting how the pitch of the motor changed slightly there. Don't really know why. But now I'm gonna hit eject or open. So there you heard it returning the laser to side A, and now I'll power it off.
All right, and now we're gonna do basically the same things we just did, but with the stereo audio setup. I wanna know what your thoughts are on this. Gonna do some chapter searching now. Happy birthday, Charlie! Happy birthday! Here you are, Charlie. Happy birthday, Charlie. Okay, and now I'm gonna skip forward to the end so it auto reverses, but I want to know if this mic setup you think is better. I don't have a great way to mount it, that's why I have the tripod in front of the camera, but if you prefer the sound of this mic setup for this purpose, let me know. I know that some people would prefer stereo, but I don't know if these mics are actually better. Certainly they're noisier than the one that's overhead. We have a picture again. And by the way, when I say noisier, I notice a 60 hertz, um, there's some sort of interference on the other mic, but I don't know if that's probably coming from the TV. I'm not quite sure, but that's probably what it is. Anyway, we just uh, opened it up and ejected the disc. So now we're gonna talk about or show the Pioneer DVL 700. That is the combination laser disc and DVD player. Right now I'm fixing its sloppy badge, but I'm gonna power it on. And I want you to notice that it has a fan, has a cooling fan. Now this thing always defaults to its red laser. That noise it made before it opened the tray was flipping the infrared laser over, or flipping the red over to infrared because I hit laser disc eject. The biggest difference with this player as far as Laserdisc performance uh, is it has a newer auto-reverse mechanism and also the transport of the tray is a newer generation. It's much softer, it's quieter, it's overall a huge improvement. Now we'll skip forward some chapters. Now here, when I'm doing a picture search, the sound is very similar, but the picture is steady because it has a digital frame buffer. Now, what just happened was it tried to switch to side B and failed. This machine has some bizarre issue where the motor will not spin up fast enough in reverse. I have no idea why it's like this. It's been like it the entire time I've had it. And what usually happens is when you try to switch to side B, it just can't spin up fast enough. It freaks out and locks up. It won't even open the tray right now because the disc is still spinning. 
finally there it goes. So that's a very bizarre quirk of this machine. But now we're going to switch trays from the big Laserdisc tray to the little DVD and CD tray. You may have noticed it did not switch the lasers around, it just spat out the little tray. So what I'm going to do now is put in a DVD, and it's going to attempt to play it with the infrared laser first. Okay, so now we have a picture. It's actually playing the DVD. So if you heard it flip the laser back over because it had to get back to that red laser. Now this is the DVD of Spaceballs. It was the closest available DVD. Uh, and I do not have the remote for this machine. I had programmed a, um, a universal remote that managed to work with it, but since I don't have the remote, it's pretty useless as a DVD player. I tried to hit play while play is selected, and it gave me the little, like, bad, no, you can't push this button symbol. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty useless without a remote. But now I just ejected the disc and I'm gonna repeat it because I want you to pay attention to how quickly the disc spins up. The disc just spins up insanely quickly on this machine because of the fact that it has that massive motor to spin up a laser disc, so spinning up a tiny little DVD is a piece of cake. Right there it switched lasers because I had it open the large laser disc tray. And it knows you're going to play something. If you're trying to play laser disc, it needs the infrared laser. Now I'm going to hit standby. And now it's off. And before it powers off, it always switches back to the red laser. Now we're at a different camera angle. It just ejected a CD, and now I'm putting in a DVD. It tried to read it with the infrared laser, but failed. And now it's actually reading the disc with the red laser. It's incredibly fast to spin up, that is. As a DVD player, it's actually quite terrible. We just saw the same exact thing from a different angle. Now we're going to eject the large tray and it's going to change the laser before it opens because it knows you're going to play a laser disc. It's going to go from the red to the infrared. And so now I put in an actual laser disc, but it doesn't mount correctly in the disc clamp.
so it just spits the disc right back out. I don't know if I did that or what, but anyway, attempt two. That actually worked correctly. Now I'll eject the disc again. Now I'm going to switch it to the small tray. And I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to add a DVD. It's going to attempt to read it with the infrared laser, then switch to the red laser. And there, it's finally spinning the disc. I've always thought that the little mini tray for CDs and DVDs was just a dumb gimmick of Pioneers, but whatever, they always did it. So here's a different angle with, again, the very fast spin up. So stand still to full speed in less than a second. Now we're gonna eject the large tray. Again, it switched back to infrared knowing I ejected the large tray. And we'll put in a laser disc. Now I'll show you it attempting to switch sides with it exposed, but you'll see just like before, it fails. At this point, it's not even trying to slow the disc down. The machine is just locked up until it stops, so I reach in to stop the disc. It's such a bizarre problem with this machine. Okay, and now we are looking at the ancient Magnavox Laserdisc player. When you turn it on without a disc, it will just do this forever. It just endlessly tries to spin up nothing. Now this is an extremely basic Laserdisc player. It has a series of LEDs on the front. And in this state, they are all on in different ways. They're not quite on at the same brightness. I don't know if this machine is like this always or if my particular example is just weird, but yeah. So when you open the lid, it will stop trying to spin up the disc. And here is me putting in an actual laser disc and seeing what happens. The lights are behaving strangely as it's going up and down in speed. Trying to hit play forward, nothing's making a difference.
Hmm. So I'm looking for another disc to play, but with this machine, when you open the lid, it has some sort of lock mechanism where it won't allow you to open it until the disc has almost completely stopped. It's a pretty clever safety feature. Uh, I don't know how it's implemented, but you'll hear a click after I hit open. I want to pay attention to that, but here's a different disc. behaving just like it was before. Now here, when I try to hit search forward, some of a picture actually shows up on the screen. We are getting some noise coming through, but it's still wavering on speed. None of the buttons I'm hitting are doing anything. Search forward appears to do something. I'm just hitting more buttons. So I hit open, and you'll hear that click when the disc slows down enough. Right there. Now the lid is actually unlatched. Right now I'm looking for a couple of laser discs. Uh, the Aristocats, which is CAV, it was able to play kind of okay. And I also, right now, I'm holding Rocky, which is a super, super old laser disc. It's one of the oldest that I have. So in case the, with digital sound, something about the newer laser discs is freaking it out for some reason, I'm going to try that very, very old uh, CLV disc. And I know that the Aristocats kind of worked before. So I think that's what I'm trying now. Yeah, and here the speed actually is steady. And we can very, very faintly see on the screen some sorts of shapes, but there's something very wrong with the picture. It's almost entirely black. Um, some garbage captioning just came up from the decoder in the TV. Uh, you can see very, very faint images of the characters from the Aristocats. Uh, turn on the index there just this machine is so frustrating because it's like it's trying its best but it just can't can't do anything more garbage captions more garbage captions yeah so I just gave up with this one Now our last ditch effort, Rocky. Super, super old disc.
Now, that noise that it's making that just started, I'm pretty sure that is the laser tracking system waking up. And here, it's doing something it's never done before. The disc is continuing to get slower, and the tracking is, like, coming on and offline repeatedly. This machine is just cursed. Sped up all on its own, by the way. And the lights, it, it went from play now to slow motion. So I'm trying to hit play again, it's not responding. So I actually turned it off in case the ancient electronics in here might somehow be affected by turning it off and on again. Now it's even in a worse state than it was in before. And if you think it's bad now, just just wait. What's happening now is the laser's objective lens is actually hitting the disc. It's great. And just in case I tried side two, trying everything I can to get this machine to do something. Oh, I'm also looking at the laser to see if it's moved back to its home position. the same behavior so this machine uh at some point i want to try to um maybe start replacing some capacitors and see if i can get it to be something more than a giant paperweight but it's um its behavior is even worse than the last time i tried it it sat for two or three years i don't think it's come out since i last um or i've tried to use it since i last made that video but anyway that's it this is Sights and Sounds. I don't think they're all going to be this long, uh, but who knows? I'll see. Just depends on what there is to what there is to see and talk about and listen to. But thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this concept, and I hope that I was able to execute it to um, execute it pretty well. Bye.